is the NBC6 News at 5. An unexpected turn of events in the case of a missing British girl. The mother of four-year-old Madeline McCann has been formally named a suspect in the disappearance of her daughter. And now there is word that her father will be named next. It is our top story at 5. Patricia Andrea was live in satellite control with the very latest on this. Patricia. Well, good afternoon. We keep getting developments in this case. What we're learning now is that the girl's mother, Kate, has apparently been offered a deal by Portuguese authorities. They've reportedly suggested that if she confessed to accidentally Accidentally killing her daughter, Kate would face only two years in prison. Right now, we don't know if this is a ploy or if investigators have enough evidence. It's been four and a half months since four-year-old Madeline McCann disappeared in Portugal. Since then, her anguished parents have worked to keep her picture in the press. Celebrities helping them raise over two million dollars to aid in the case. But in a shocking twist, Portuguese investigators have now named Maddie's mother, Kate, a suspect, questioning her for hours. I'm just horrified. The only, anyone who could even think that my daughter would do such a thing. I know she hasn't done anything to harm Madeline. Jerry the same. It's just devastating to think of people who even think this. New forensic evidence was reportedly obtained from the room where Maddie was last seen and from a car her parents rented almost a month after she disappeared. Maddie's father, Jerry, has also been questioned intensely. The McCanns have maintained their innocence from the start. Both are doctors who are said to be devout Catholics and devoted parents who blame themselves for leaving Maddie and her two-year-old twin siblings alone that night. A family spokesperson reiterated their plea. I want to appeal again to the person or people who took her or know who took her to do the right thing. It's not too late. Please let her go or call the police. And as far as we know, the girl's father, Jerry, has not been named a suspect at this point. We, of course, will continue to monitor developments and bring you the latest. Live in satellite control, Patricia Andreu, NBC6. Patricia, thank you. We have our eye on some activity in the Atlantic at this hour. In fact, there is a possibility that a disturbance could become a depression. Chief Meteorologist Paul Deano is here now with a first look at the tropics at 5. Paul? Well, Julie and Tony, when we have something that could possibly become tropical, we sit there in the weather office about 440, have all the graphics ready, and we wait. We we wait for the advisory to be issued because we'll get one just before 5 o'clock. Well, we waited from 440 until 5 o'clock and the advisory has not come in. They always are at least two or three minutes early. So, folks, this area of low pressure in the Atlantic has yet and has not become tropical. Upper level winds have relaxed and that has done a couple things to the system. We'll zoom on in tighter and show you what's happening. The most major change is that we have thunderstorms on the western side and we have thunderstorms on the eastern side of the system. So you have thunderstorms on both sides of the storm, which mean the area is becoming better organized. Yesterday it looked horrible. Today, much better organized and also getting closer to the Carolina coastline. Thunderstorms only about 150 miles offshore. Despite all of that, the hurricane hunters are out there right now and simply they are not finding winds that are strong enough yet for tropical storm formation. It may change in a matter of just minutes or hours. We may get a special statement, but as of 5 o'clock, it is just a rainmaker as of right now. The steering flow is of concern because whatever this is, even if it's just rain and a little bit of wind, it will be heading toward the Carolinas and will begin to affect the Carolinas as soon as tomorrow. And as for our impact here in South Florida, the east winds wrapping around this lower, making it all the way down here, which means a high risk of rip currents today and into tomorrow with some sunshine for tomorrow. That will be a risk of rip currents for a lot of beachgoers who will enjoy a Saturday out on the water. I will have your six-day forecast coming up in a few minutes with more on this. And if it becomes tropical, we will let you know immediately right here on NBC6. Paul, thank you. The White House is now confirming that U.S. intelligence has a copy of an apparently new Osama bin Laden video. Now, the new tape set to be released on the Internet near the anniversary of 9-11. Steve Handelsman is live in Washington with more on the message. Steve? Hi, Tony. Thanks. The latest is the tape is out, at least in part, and it allays some fears here in Washington. Some had feared that it would uh, announce or at least threaten some kind of a new attack. It does not. Instead, it's a typical Osama bin Laden rant, but his appearance is remarkable. On the first video by Osama bin Laden in three years, he sports a shorter, darker beard. He looked a lot older in his last video back in 2004. Arab men generally don't dye their beards. Gray is seen as prestigious. But bin Laden is cultivating a worldwide movement of mostly young people 
like the terror suspects arrested this week in Germany. And the 50-year-old Al-Qaeda leader is apparently vain enough to fake his age. He is just trying to look young and vibrant with this new touch of black, uh, you know, beard thing, as opposed to the scraggly, white-haired terrorist has-been that he is. Has been, maybe, but still in the fight. The biggest question is, is he still alive? And if this, in fact, is new footage, then that will confirm it. On the tape, bin Laden talks about the war in Iraq, and he wonders why. Since the Democrats control Congress, they can't force a U.S. pullout. He advises young Muslim men to carry out suicide bombings against the West. But days before the 9-11 anniversary, bin Laden makes no specific threats in what U.S. officials see as a propaganda video. No question. It's a morale builder for uh, al-Qaeda to put tapes out. It makes the troops feel good about what they're doing, I and mean, the troops being the enemy troops. It's a way of playing with our heads which, of course, is a lot of what terrorism is about. Tonight, the video is being technically analyzed by U.S. experts. Job one is to look for clues that might point to the whereabouts of Osama bin Laden so that his next video might be shot by American soldiers. Live from Washington, I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC6. New details about the fate of Manuel Noriega. His attorneys in Miami say they'll ask a federal appeals court to halt his extradition to France now that a judge has ruled against him for a second time. A federal judge rejected the former Panamanian dictator's argument he should not be extradited because of questions about whether France will honor his status as a prisoner of war. So what exactly were the circumstances surrounding a four-year-old girl coming here to the States with her mother, leaving her father behind in Cuba? Well, the judge in this international custody battle is now trying to sort out all the details. For more, let's go live to Hank Tester in Miami. Hank? Latest today is the father for the second day in a row had his life laid out in open court. And by mid-afternoon, he got emotional. Here's the story. No quiero nadie saber cómo uno se encuentra detrás de un teléfono ahí. You know, you don't want to know how you feel when you are behind a phone trying. A la hija de uno cuando más necesita uno es. On the other end of the line, you know when your daughter needs you the most. Just one moment, please. The state of Florida came down hard on Rafael Izquierdo. The state wants Esquierdo's four-year-old daughter to stay and be adopted by a Coral Gables couple. The state says Rafael is unfit to take the little girl back to Cuba. Did you understand Usted that this document que este documento gave consent daba el consentimiento for Elena, para que Elena to take Elizabeth to the United States pudiera llevar a Elizabeth a los Estados Unidos with your permission con el permiso de usted sí yes though his love life is complex Esquerdo insisted that he was a caring father paid for care for the little girl provided food even though he gave up the little girl so she could come to the US with her mother how many times a month on average did you visit Elizabeth during her life Casi todos los días. Almost on a daily basis. Almost every day. Casi todos los días. Casi todos los días. Almost every day. Elena Perez, Rafael's lover, lost the little girl when the state removed her after Elena attempted to commit suicide. But did the father try and keep in touch with the little girl? You never sent a photograph. Usted nunca mandó alguna fotografía. To Elizabeth. Para Elizabeth. Not one. Ni una. Verdad. Two. Well, there are some things that may come out that may not be in totally favorable one way or another, but basically I think they proved our case through their cross-examination. I mean, they established that Raphael saw his daughter every day. They established that, that Raphael provided uh, sustenance for his family every day. Now, back live, Father will be back on the stand uh, starting Monday morning. Now, tonight at 6 o'clock, you'll hear the state of Florida call Raphael Esquerdo a liar. Now coming up to 96. Reporting live, Hank Tester, NBC6, back to you. Hank, thank you. BSO detectives say a man accused of shooting a Hurricane Wilma relief worker has been captured in Mississippi. In November 2005, Brian Buzigard and four others traveled to South Florida to assist with recovery efforts. Well, police say Buzigard's boss, Jonathan Hurl, shot him after a night of drinking in Lauderdale Lakes. Hurl has since been on the run. 
Two remarkable rescues of people who had been missing in rugged areas in the western U.S. are giving hope to the family and friends who are searching for famed aviator Steve Fawcett. Leanne Gregg joined us now live from Minden, Nevada with the very latest on that search. Leanne? Hi, Julie. More than 200 and, or rather, more than 25 aircraft from three different states, along with 230 searchers on the ground, are looking for Fawcett, but still they have no clue about how he vanished. The search area for famed aviator Steve Fawcett now includes 17,000 miles of Nevada and California. Air and ground crews have been looking for Fawcett since he was last seen Monday taking off from this ranch owned by hotel magnate Baron Hilton. For Fawcett's family, the wait is difficult. Um, the family is subdued and they're having a tough time with this. We're into numerous days and as you know, Mr. Fawcett's an accomplished pilot and no one knows what happened or where he is. <laughs> but news of other rescues Thursday is helping energize the search for Fawcett even more. A Colorado couple missing since Monday north of the Rocky Mountain National Park celebrated after a rescue plane found them. They'd taken a wrong turn on a trail. And there's nothing there to tell you to cross the river. We and never saw a sign. And in West described as nothing short of a miracle, 76-year-old Doris Anderson, who had been missing for two weeks in the eastern Oregon mountains, was found Thursday, a week after the search had been called off. I'd given up hope that she could have lived the first three days. But my wife always said, no, she's alive. Anderson had been with her husband bow hunting when they got separated.